Hey there everybody and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're working on some of our mountainous kind of rocky uh, bases. Uh, a little while back I did the uh, Custodes video and of course did the Necromancer video and um, people started noticing that I was basing some of my heroes on these kind of high uh, rocky mountainous bases and I started getting requests for that. Now I've been a little busy obviously with some of the new releases and a couple of little projects and things like that. But I thought I'd get caught up here and actually do a video on how I did these uh, mountainous bases. And they're actually, they look super solid. Um, they're actually a lot nicer than any of the resin bases that are out there because, uh, well, I like them because we can get a bit of an overhang. I find a lot of the resin bases, uh, because they pour from the top, they don't get a lot of overhang or any of this kind of intricate inner detail here. So... I figured I would just uh, do them up this way. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple things. First off, I'm going to talk a little bit about the background, you know, kind of how and why I uh, I do it this way. And then um, we'll talk about the materials and we'll put one together for our uh, Lord Veritant who is in dire need of uh, a little platform to stand on there so we can uh, shine his... Uh, his uh, beacon of light uh, out uh, a little farther on the in the crowd. For those of you that don't know me personally, I love, love, love the outdoors. Uh, it's just one of the places where I love to live. Uh, and I'm in a, a wonderful spot here where I'm really close to the mountains and I can go out hiking pretty much any time I want. Uh, and I do. It's, it's, it's absolutely spectacular. Now, when I'm out there, I get to see these amazing views and these amazing bits of terrain. And I tend to kind of model um, after what I've seen in terms of what uh, terrain is out there. Now... What I wanted to do with these is take a few snapshots as to how rocks appear in the wild. Um, I like taking pictures of kind of how the dust settles in the corners, uh, how you know it gets broken apart and eroded by kind of time and the elements, and how foliage and vegetation just kind of grows in these uh, cracks. So. Uh, I want to use these as a guide to what we're going to do, and I would like to uh, kind of refer back to it and recreate it if I can. All right, so let's start off with our most uh, basic part of the materials, and that is going to be the cork itself. Uh, I've chosen a bit of a chunky cork uh, here. It's, uh, it's actually pretty decent. It kicks in at about... Um, but about a quarter inch uh, thick, which is pretty cool. It's actually used for making uh, poster boards. And the one that I use in particular, it's called Art Mines. Uh, it's a generic uh, made from wherever uh, office supply. And it's for making um, just kind of hanging uh, poster sized or uh, frame sized bits of cork to poke in, thumbtacks and keep notes and all that. Um, I'll just flash to a picture of it here. Uh, this one particular one comes in 12 inch by 12 inch sections. And uh, it's got four pieces in here. This will last you like a whole army. And in reality, you don't use very much, um, very much at all. Now, I tend to use it for the larger bases. For example, uh, here we have the uh, Lord Veritant's uh, 40 mil base, and um, I typically use it for the larger ones. Obviously, if it's, uh, you know, I kind of reserve it for characters or for the custodies. Um, I really like using it because they just they just stand out, and they're kind of the few and the and, and the strongest of, of that bunch. Putting it together is super easy in terms of uh, what we're doing for sizing. And um, now this is just a piece that I broke off. Normally what I would do is I would just stick onto my uh, big uh, 12 by 12 sheet. I'd stick on my 40 mil base and then I would just literally, sorry buddy. Uh, and then I would just literally uh, just cut loosely uh, the size of that base with my uh, hobby knife here and uh, break it off. Now, this is a very, um, very easy process, and it's uh, it, it is pretty messy. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this essentially this 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 cube, this piece that I had here, and I'm just going to take my thumbnail and chip away. Now, because we've got a really kind of chunky grain uh, for this. Uh, it works out pretty well. Now, um, most rocks aren't a square. Uh, it doesn't occur naturally in nature. So I'm just going to pick away at these corners until I'm kind of happy. Now, this thing is super messy. Um, I know a lot of people like to just kind of sit down in front of the TV and just kind of pick away at bases. And um, 
I mean, that's totally cool. Uh, but uh, yeah, it just it uh, it definitely makes a mess. Now, any of these pieces, if I screw up and take off too much, uh, I can always glue them back on uh, something like this to give us some additional rock details. So uh, it doesn't usually end up going to waste, um, but you will end up with yards and yards of this uh, left over. Now, I want him standing up on a bit of a rock, um, but the pictures that we had before, I could stop here and that's, that. you know, that's fine, he's on a rock, yahoo. Um, but uh, the pictures that I was showing before, uh, there's a lot of erosion and it gives you the opportunity for kind of greenery or finer rock or dust or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the same piece here and I'm just going to work my way into the, um, into the piece of rock uh, just a little bit. And so I've got this little bit of a runoff um, kind of spot in there. Now, uh, looking at the Lord Veriton's feet, they're, they're kind of close together. So I'm going to have him maybe in the middle, which, uh, you know, it'll be kind of cool to see that visual detail coming off the side there. Uh, but maybe, um, just maybe I should put a little bit more in the back. Um, any opportunity for a little bit more detail is always uh, appreciated. Your eye definitely picks up and appreciates that that visual interest. All right. So again, fairly straight up and fairly straightforward. Um, you can see that though, you know, the water's run off or the you know, erosion has happened in there. And our Lord Veritant, uh, I'm gonna take his two feet and I'm going to have him straddling that, that open rock there. Now, the base is going to extend a little bit farther out, uh, but on these single character models, it's, uh, it's kind of neat to see a little bit of that. If you did want to minimize that a bit, Again, you just pick away until you're completely happy uh, with what you've got. Now you'll see that I've got a few, I've you know done a pretty good job of taking away most of the, uh, the edges in here, but I still got a few flat ones and uh, you don't really want any kind of flat edges because again, it's not a natural shape. Now by clipping off a little bit here, I get this really cool uh, overhang effect, uh, which again, you won't get with any of those, those resin models. So um, I'm going to park him up on like this, I think. Yeah, I think that'll look really, really solid. Okay, so um, next up, uh, I'm gonna clear off all my mess here and then we'll glue it on. Okay, so now that we're set to glue on our base, um, normally I would use a, a PVA for sand or something like that, and I'm sure PVA would work just fine. Uh, but for this one, I like to use uh, carpenter's glue, actually. And um, I find it's got a lot more tack to it, and it's, um, it seems to work a little bit better for me, um, but I'm sure bog standard PVA would do the trick as well. So what I'm going to do now is take my the bottom of my base here, Okay, and then I'm just going to uh, glob some goopy PVA on here. Uh, you know, kind of keeping it close to the center. I don't want to have uh, too much on. It's kind of snotty. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire it on my base. And uh, it's in the center, so I'm just going to work it out uh, to the edges uh, by twisting it around a little bit. And you'll see it start squirting out the, uh, the bottom of our of our work here now immediately it starts to kind of tack in uh, i'll just do it kind of a double check as to what i'm looking for uh perfect that'll look great um, and then i'm going to make sure that i leave a little bit of space in here uh, you'll see for uh, you know bog standard sand and we'll put that in next but let's focus on getting this piece on first now, uh, to make sure that it kind of sticks down, I'm going to take uh, another 40 mil base here. I'll toss it on top, and then I'll just use one of my, oh, it's already coming loose. Uh, I'll just use one of my uh, cheapy uh, little dollar store clips here that I got, and I'll just clip it so that it stays. Now, any of the overflow is fine. We can actually go in, um, uh, if you've got a sharp tool or something like that, you can go in and, and remove it out. Or um, the other option is we can wait till it dries and we'll just cut it out with, uh, with our X-Acto knife here, uh, our hobby knife. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'll let this dry, uh, and I'm going to let this dry for a significant amount of time, um, probably let it sit overnight, and then we'll come back and um, we'll put our sand on and we'll start putting some watered down PVA to kind of harden it up, make it a little more, little more durable.
All right, so I let this sit for the evening. Um, good morning, everybody. Hope you had a good sleep. And uh, now um, I'm going to just unclip uh, our clip here and then uh, pull off our other spare 40 mil. And we can see that our base is uh, all pretty much ready to go. It looks really good. Um, now, there's a couple things I'm going to do. Now, obviously, I could just uh, glue my dude on and then uh, prime it all up and all that, and it would be fine. Um, but there's a couple other pieces that I want to get in. I wouldn't mind doing a quick, uh, just a cleanup pass. Uh, there's a couple spots that are kind of hanging over that might cause us a little bit of grief. Um, but um, what I'd like to do is go through here now, and I'm just going to rehatch the base just a little bit with my uh, hobby knife here. And uh, it's actually not too bad. Sometimes you get a little bit of extra spillage um, with uh, all the extra glue. And you can see it kind of flakes a little bit there. All right, so I'm just gonna make sure I just get back to that so I can get the PVA in where I need it to be uh, so we can glue in our sand. Um, I accidentally scored the base there. I'm just gonna give it a little uh, scraping here just to kind of even it all out. All right. Perfect, we're all fine, everything's good. Uh, all right, so um, next up, I'm going to grab my PVA, which is my uh, my bog standard uh, PVA stuff here, typical school glue. And I'm just, like I did with my grassland bases, I'm just going to sneak some PVA in on the spots here where we're going to be putting uh, sand. Uh, so it's nice, uh, you know, if we saw with the pictures before, any kind of spacing in there, uh, you can see that dirt collects uh, pretty much wherever it can, uh, wherever the wind will grab it or the water will uh, catch it on the rock. All right. So I'll do that. And then um, this is just the head of a missing old blade. Uh, and I use it just because I like the shape of it to get things in. But um, you can use any of the uh, other tools. Uh, the GW Texture tool is, uh, is great for sneaking stuff in uh, to, little, uh, to little nooks and crannies here, especially if you're trying to move the, the PVA around. So I'm going to move this PVA around here. Sure, get to all the nooks and crannies. Beautiful. All right, and then um, I'm going to um, take this base and I'm going to put it into um, it's kind of a mix. It's like uh, it's like playground sand and a little bit of extra grit in there. Um, uh, again, the grassland video, if you want to see, this is just the um, it's just regular playground sand, really, and uh, woodland scenics. I think it's ballast for uh, their, the, the trains and things like that. Um, so I'm just going to take my base and I'm just going to tuck uh, the edges uh, neatly here into our sand. And just make sure that they get the sand tucked in there. All right. Now, a little tap like that, get any loose bits and pieces off. And then uh, one of the things that I'll also do is I'll just take my uh, thumb and just kind of run it around just to make sure that I don't have any of that sand and grit on the actual uh, ring of the base there. Just keep it nice and clean and tidy. All right, now it's, uh, you know, set the timer and it's uh, wait time again. We'll probably let that sit for about... Oh geez, um, I, like an hour or so minimum. There's not a lot of PVA on there, but uh, you know, just let it sit for a couple hours, like three, four hours, and then um, uh, once uh, that is dry, uh, we'll come back and move on to our next step. All right, so we've got our Lord Veritant all dressed up on his big rock here, and uh, looks really good. I could just super glue him to the base and hope all as well, uh, but there's a few problems kind of that come along with that. It's not a very durable. Um, you know, kind of binding to the rock because, uh, well, the cork is porous, right? And that's kind of our, our, our big challenge here. Um, if you've ever gotten any kind of super glue on your fingertips, uh, you'll find after a couple hours, it just kind of falls off because of the oil in your skin, because your skin is porous, all that. So uh, what I'm going to do is combat that a little bit by kind of increasing the strength of the bond um, by offering some, instead of it just being lateral strength, we're going to give it some vertical strength as well by basically pinning uh, paper clip into the 
uh, base and up his leg. Um, specifically when it comes to models like uh, this guy, you'll see he's got his like happy uh, pose going on, but he's really only got one kind of solid foot on the ground. Uh, the other one is a bit of a step up here. Um, so, you know, it's going to be a very small area that it'll be uh, glued to. So what I want to do is uh, essentially I'm going to pin uh, up the heel of this guy right into his um, right into kind of his shin and calf area there. Um, I'm just going to pin up with uh, the, the paper clip and then we'll put that into the cork as well and we'll pre-drill both clearly. Uh, now the first thing I'm going to do is I want to make sure that I have that uh, uh, an, enough space for that glue to stick to. So the first thing I'm going to do is cross hatch with my hobby knife uh, the bottom of his foot and that one spot where it's going to be connecting okay so we'll just give it a good cross hatch very similar to what I did on the base uh, it doesn't have to be anything fancy but I just you can even hear it I just want a little bit of a texture for that glue to kind of grab onto so uh, that's step number one uh, step number two we're going to use our pin vise uh, the jeweler's pin vices. Uh, GW's got one as well. Um, you know, there's a lot of generic products out there, and I thought, oh man, I'll just get a, a cheapy uh, kind of pin vise. But the GW ones are, are awesome. Um, they don't squeak, which is kind of weird, uh, as a weird thing to kind of dig about something. But uh, it's a big thing for me. So uh, I'll just pin about, oh, I don't know, about an eighth of an inch or a uh, quarter of an inch up the shin. right and then to get an accurate uh, measurement as to what I want to do for cutting I'm going to take my paper clip which I've already matched uh, to the size of the pin vise here uh, I'm going to take my paper clip and I'm going to um, just kind of tuck it in up the hole here we'll do a test fit first before we glue all right so he's got a good distance in there and then I'm going to cut the paper clip. So you'll need uh, cutters or what have you. Um, I tend to use these uh, jewelers pliers, um, and you can see it's really hard on the cutting piece here. So um, uh, I just tend to cut with these more than anything else. Uh, I'd like to keep my hobby clippers nice and uh, you know in really good shape for the plastics. That way I don't nick or ding the plastics. Anyway, uh, I'm going to go in here and I'll uh, clip the paper clip. Now I haven't glued anything yet. And then I'll clip the paper clip about an eighth of an inch. So um, the, the cork itself is uh, a quarter of an inch. Okay, so I haven't glued in the pin yet. Um, but before I do that, uh, I'm just going to go over top of our, our, our base here and make sure that I know where I want this to be. So I had him positioned uh, just briefly before. So I'll find the spot where I want the pin to go. And I think it'll be right there. And I can see that it's going to be right tucked in here. And I'm actually going to, believe it or not, pre-drill uh, the cork. Now the cork is really soft. But I'm just going to pre-drill down to the base. Uh, a couple up and downs here. Okay, and I can see it right there. Um, now, if you're walking away from it, you might want to sharpie it or mark it or whatever. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to now uh, glue the pin into the base and then, uh, sorry, into his foot. And then I'll uh, just put a big dollop of glue on and uh, do, the, uh, do it onto the cork there as well. Okay, so I put just covering the hole just so that when I slide the pin in, you know, I take a big bunch of glue up with it into the leg. And then I'll use my super glue here and I'll make sure I get some good coverage, drawing a glop all over the model. And then a little bit on the hole here. And so there's actually just a, a lot more glue than I really kind of need. Uh, but I want to make sure it gets down and into the, into the base there. All right, I'll double check my posing. And he looks really good and he's kind of asymmetrical. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's nice, the base kind of covers 
the entirety of the model, including the lantern, which is nice. And yeah, it looks really good. Now, because it's so porous, it's gonna start taking right away, which is great. And so I'll let that dry a little bit, and then I'll come back and I'll use some watered down PVA to harden up the base itself. All right, so the super glue has all uh, dried now and uh, let it sit for a little while. And um, we were just taking this cork apart earlier with our, with our thumbnails or our fingernails or what have you, just kind of picking away at it. And my concern is that over time, uh, it, the same thing will happen here as, as well. Now, the solution to this, of course, um, it is porous, it is absorbent. Um, so why don't we fill it with uh, water and PVA? So I've got my regular PVA here, but aha, super tricky. It's got Sharpie on top. That means that this was mixed um, half water, half PVA. So I basically used the PVA halfway down, topped it up with water, and then just uh, really shake it well. You can see, uh, I don't even see that yet. It's pretty runny in there. And essentially, I'm just gonna shake the crap out of this, make sure it's all mixed up nice. And then I'm going to literally um, somewhat douse uh, the the cork in PVA. Now, uh, I usually start at the top, obviously, and I'm just putting like blobs of this half and half all over, tucking it into the little nooks and crannies and all this. And I am literally just going to kind of soak it all in here. So this will make a pretty hefty mess, but you can see already that it's already starting to uh, that it's already starting to um, absorb into the cork here. So uh, take your time. Uh, this usually takes me about a day or so, and um, I just let it all dry thoroughly, and then I'll hit it again. Now I'm going to soak all of this. I'll even turn it up on its side and go underneath and uh, soak it in there as well. Or I'll hold it up on one side and then kind of leave it uh, balanced laying down uh, maybe on the face of the model here. Uh, and I'll put the PVA in the back and let that soak in. And then I'll just basically let that sit uh, for a couple hours and dry. And uh, the net effect is, is it will really firm up that cork and make it, uh, you know, just about as hard as plastic. So let's see how, uh, let's see how this goes. So uh, again, not very much time at all. And you can see it soaks right in there. And it only goes in, you know, not about an eighth of an inch in, uh, but it will uh, harden up the, the cork quite a bit. Okay, I'll let that sit and we will be right back to see how it looks. So I've let it dry and you can see that it's still, I mean, it, you, you can't even really tell that it's happened at all. It's been absorbed in and it's a little firmer here, uh, but this is something you wanna build up over a couple coats. Now, I know patience isn't always our, our best attribute, um, but I'm gonna take my half and half uh, PVA water mix again, and uh, I'm gonna do a, a couple of coats of this. So um, as I said before, you know, we don't always, want to be patient with this stuff but uh, it doesn't take much time and if we're batching out a bunch of these uh, it might not be that bad of a deal so quite literally I am just going to have this sit here like this and what are we gonna do I'll throw a pen or something like that underneath just so that it stays now it looks like it's gonna spill over but I'm just gonna let it sit so the process now is to do this on all sides and you can keep soaking it in multiple times until such time as you get that nice kind of firm, almost resin-like texture uh, from all the PVA going in. So uh, take your time, uh, it's worth it in the end and really it's, it's downtime. You can always work on something else if you like. All right, I'll let this keep going and uh, back in a bit. All right, so the PVA, the multiple coats have absorbed in and dried and it's got this kind of a little bit of an armored kind of coating to it now and it's a little more like a like a resin as opposed to a cork because it's just loaded down with with pva and water so um nice and dry and firm uh we're not going to lose these little edges uh which is great that gives us that nice character when we're doing our rocks so the next step here is going to be to prime them all up and um, obviously I'll prime the base along with the model and I'll do that with Corax white and then we'll uh get painting 
All right, so we've got the model primed up and the base, obviously. And uh, while we're putting on the base colors for the model, before we do the big wash, uh, kind of that mid-step there, uh, I want to make sure that I wash the base at the same time. So I'm going to take my administratum gray, and I'm just going to do the kind of the major cork rock piece here. And uh, just, you know, take your time again. Make sure you get into all the nooks and crannies. And... You know, if you get too close to the feet or something like that, and don't be shy. You can always you know, crack out a detail brush and just work your way in that last little bit in there. But I'll work my way, and on all the stone pieces, I'll just apply the Administratum Gray. So with that gray of the Administratum Gray all just kind of settling in and drying, uh, I'm going to go after any of the little sandy bits here that we uh, kind of put the sand in. And I'm going to be doing that, ironically enough, with Talaran Sand. And uh, just again, anywhere where those little bits of um, sand have collected at the bottom of those rocks, uh, just like in our pictures here, uh, we're going to do with the uh, Talarin sand. So uh, I'll just sneak some color into all of these. And then I think we'll be ready to wash the model and the base together. All right, so we've gone along and painted our model. Now, uh, we've washed uh, the base of the model with the rest of the model. So as we're trucking along painting here, uh, I'm going to take my, say, Talaran sand, and um, now I'm going to go back over the, uh, the, the, the sandy bits in there and uh, just make sure I don't have too much paint on the brush. And I'm going to do this first because the, uh, you know, three-dimensionally, it's gonna be easier to paint uh, the sand first. So just kind of a wet, kind of overbrushy, dry brushy type approach. Uh, just going in there to get all that dirt. Now obviously I'm going to paint the rim around a little bit of a different color. So it can be a little bit messy on that side of the equation. But yeah, we'll just go in and we'll touch up all those little bits and pieces there. Perfect. All right, next up we'll take our administratum gray and then we'll just go over top of uh, that cork there, everything that was gray before, and uh, we'll do it with a you know a successive dry brushing. So we'll start uh, fairly light in the dry brushing uh, scale of things, and then we'll just go over top, and we want to be picking out all of the detail uh, that we get there. So um, this is a little more of a wetter, uh, more of an overbrush than a dry brush, um, but I just want to make sure that I get all that detail that's in there, uh, and while kind of leaving the the shaded parts recessed as well. So once you've got the bulk of the uh, kind of dry brushy, over brushy, you know, bringing out the highlights of the gray there, um, don't be shy. You can always go back in with a little bit more wash and just low light some of the areas in particular where you want to call a little bit of extra attention to. So anytime there's a, a little bit of an overhang, as we can see here, I'll just tuck uh, maybe a little bit of wash in there, spread it around a bit, just to give it a little bit of additional texture. Uh, we want to make sure that it looks like a rock. So definitely sneaking just a little bit of extra, uh, you know, shadow or low light uh, on, and on any of the overhangs uh, always seems to really kind of bring out, you know, that real feeling of it being this chunky rock. And you can see right away, your eye gets pulled into that and it draws your eye to the highlight uh, and it makes it look like this rocky kind of crag type of rock. All right, so it's looking pretty sharp. Um, like I said, I went in with a little bit of the low lights. Uh, you can always bounce back and now paint in some streaks with your uh, administratum gray if you want to brighten that up a little bit. And um, to do that, obviously, we just take a little bit of our administratum gray. Uh, you know, I get a decent sized uh, brush, maybe like a medium kind of brush. And all I'm going to do is just, if you're going to do any kind of edge highlighting on the edge, instead of highlighting it like you would like a, a Space Marine armor, I'm just going to streak in that extra little bit of highlight uh, towards the edge. Give it kind of a little more of a water, a water kind of eroded or like a dirty uh, via rain kind of uh, look to it. So just a little bit of streakiness just to give it a little bit more of a natural kind of, um, you know, just a natural kind of dirty look. And then finally for the band around the bottom, uh, obviously you want it to, if you want your leaders to stand out by having them on rocks, or you can have them all on rocks, I guess. Uh, but what I'm going to do is just make this so it matches the rest of the army that we're painting this for. Uh, I've got a black rim on those guys. So I'm just going to use a bad and black. And uh, I'm just going to go over that rim at the bottom. Maybe it'll be Steel Legion Drab, maybe it'll be, uh, you know, a green, whatever color that you want to use. Uh, but just for this one, I'm using, I'm using a bad and black.
Okay, so we've got the banding uh, at the bottom all done, and the painting is essentially finished. Uh, to tidy up and to kind of resemble what we see in real life, what we're going to do is we're going to put a bit of flock, uh, just green everyday flock, and we're going to put that into the, the crevices here. Um, in nature, that's where the water collects, uh, so it should be easy to get some PVA in there. So in nature, that's where it will collect, and uh, in our example here, it'll collect there as well. So uh, just putting a little bit of glue in here. This is a clear PVA, but you can use regular PVA, that's fine. This is just what was around. Okay, and then I'll take a my flock here, and this flock gets pretty much everywhere, so I've got it in a bag, and I dole it out with a spoon. So what I'll do now is I'll just take that and I'll just uh, toss that in there. And then I'll uh, spin our friend around here. And then I'll toss it in there as well. And then I'll just take it and uh, blow on the base while he's upside down. And you'll see that that just collects that little bit of greenery in there. And it looks... Uh, pretty sharp. Okay, so with that little bit of flock on there, you can see that it really does uh, tidy up the base. It makes it look a little bit more natural, very much like the pictures of the of the actual rocks that I've actually seen out in the mountains themselves. So a uh, nice dramatic kind of look to it. You know, it really elevates, literally elevates your hero up. Uh, so he stands a little ahead or so above everybody else. And uh, I think it does a great job of polishing it off. You can see here that I've got it in browns and we've got it in blacks and it looks just awesome. So that's, uh, that's it for this one, guys. Uh, if you like the video, obviously hit that like button. Uh, it really helps get the video out there and the channel out there and helps with all the YouTube algorithms. Um, if you're interested in more videos like this, uh, feel free to hit that subscribe button and make sure you click on that little notification bell there as well. And you get notifications of all of our future videos. And until uh, then, we'll catch you in the next video.